This is a special encore presentation of One on One with Jane Mitchell to celebrate Trevor Hoffman's induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Rewind now to 2015. Trevor Hoffman's stats over the course of 18 Major League Baseball seasons are impressive, history-making, and many believe Hall of Fame worthy as he becomes eligible for the National Baseball Hall of Fame ballot in 2016. Beyond the numbers, it's also how he performed that makes him a legend, a point of pride in San Diego and revered as a consummate professional throughout the game. In this edition, we will hear how he is enjoying life and a schedule on his time. But first, we revisit his story and a most magnificent celebration of his career. It's the 1998 National League Western Division Champion. Trevor Hoffman has taken the mound to deliver an adrenaline-laden, entertaining performance with stellar results literally from start to finish retiring with 601 saves, more than any other in Major League Baseball history. And on August 21, 2011, he emerges from the bullpen one final time, in dramatic fashion, with his wife Tracy and their three boys, Brody, Quinn, and Wyatt. To an ovation and a ballpark filled with fans, family and old friends. All there to be part of history as the San Diego Padres bestow upon Trevor Hoffman a team's highest honor. The retirement of number 51, once again never to be worn by any Padre in future generations. On that sunny Sunday summer's day, number 51 steps out of his pitching comfort zone and once again delivers with humility and heart. You know, I'm, uh, I'm gonna take a little page out of Tony's book and that's what I'm gonna say is thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been an unbelievable day. This honor has been earned over time and this is our time to reflect on his journey from a familiar spot, the Padres Clubhouse. What's it feel like to be sitting here at your locker now? Well, as a non-active player, it's pretty, pretty special, pretty, Big honor to have your name still on top of a locker in a facility that uh, you're no longer active. So, um, kind of says a lot about what they think of you and how uh, how, how kind of what, what your impact was here. A few memories with champagne, a few seasons it's with champagne. It's always nice to have that stale smell of champagne. <laughs> it's obviously the goal of any team is to uh, be able to spread it around. At 31, number 51 was emerging as one of the best in the game. At 38 years old in 2005. I, I think we could probably use a different word as, as emerging, maybe evolved. Proving resilient, considering a few seasons before 2002, he was playing through pain and a simple arthroscopic surgery on his rotator cuff didn't solve the problem by that December. And that became frustrating and that became scary and um, a part of, of, out of out of control that uh, I didn't like, because I'm usually always in control of, of what I want to do. Spring training 2003, news of plan B, a more invasive shoulder surgery requiring months of rehab. Is it hurting? A little bit, but uh, it's kind of part of the thing you got to go through as well. Oh. There's really no guarantees, there's no forecast of uh, where you're going to be at. And a little scary, knowing what guys have gone through in the past and how determined you have to be. And the minute I towed the rubber and the bullpen mound, that the folks that are always down in the uh, in the bullpen in Qualcomm started applauding, and then you you kind of heard as like a wave, the whole stadium started started up clapping and appreciating that I was getting ready to go into a ball game. This was seventh inning, and I, I don't even know if we were winning, and that was that was cool. That kind of all right, this this makes sense, and not that I'm back, but. It made all the, kind of the hard work worth getting to that moment that, uh, okay, now we go to the next level. We, you know, let's, let's get back to where uh, I've, I've been before. Welcome back, Trevor Hoffman. A perfect seventh inning. One, two, three. Opening a second wave of milestones, May 6th, 2005. Yeah! Number 400! August 24th, 2005. It's his 425th career save. He takes over second place on the all-time list all by himself. September 24th, 2006. Max 
backhanded by the shortstop Blum got a hurry got him yes 479 Trevor Hoffman has become the all-time saves leader in Major League Baseball history and they're all chasing him you people deserve to have it my teammates deserve to be a part of this at home it's some tremendous for the city of San Diego now retired he reflects on that moment proud that you know, one Lee could be here, um, be a part of that, because um, there was such a gap from when he established it and when it was being broken. But really, it was so superseded by what our, our, our goal was, and that was to, to get into the postseason. And a few days later, we were able to do that. The times that we spent competing inside these lines is something that is sacred. And I took it serious every time we had a chance to come on this field. But inside that clubhouse is just as sacred. You guys have always had my back, and I appreciate every opportunity I had to step on this mound, step at Jack Murphy, Qualcomm, to do my work for you guys. I was wanting to make sure that I did the job that was in front of me to the best of my ability each time I popped out in front of you. A significant time, June 6, 2007. I can, I can see the fastball down the way, Joe West calling strike three on Russell Martin. I can see it vividly. 500 saves for Trevor Hoffman. Another vivid memory, not as positive. Did In not. Excruciating. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. The last week of 07, with the Padres on the brink of postseason play for the third season in a row. It was a, a challenge to rise again after blowing the save to the Milwaukee Brewers and having Anthony be a part of uh, not being able to see that through and then not being able to have enough in the tank to make it happen in Colorado. That was, I, I took a lot of the, the burden for that. I felt very, very much responsible. 2008, a tough year for the Padres, but Trevor marched on his 13th season with at least 30 saves, another Major League Baseball record. Then something many thought unimaginable. His contract negotiations with the Padres broke down. Um, would have liked to have finished up here, but I think that the organization needed to move in a different direction. Still, it took him a little time to adjust as he signed with the Milwaukee Brewers. It was a bit scary for that stage of my career, but I wanted to keep playing. And so to do that, it wasn't going to be in a Padre uniform. 2009, another landmark year, extending his record to 14 seasons with at least 30 saves. And he became an all-star for the seventh time. But 2010, at 42, he struggled. What was that like for you, Trevor? Someone who is so accustomed to performing at such a high level and the expectation is that you're nearly perfect. Tell us what was happening. I think sometimes it's hard to compete with the expectation as much as it's hard to compete with the actual player out there. And so um, I was faced with a new challenge. You know, it, was, it wasn't just free and easy and getting people out and moving on to the next day. It was getting, getting beat up a little bit and, and having to come back and, and rise above that and ultimately losing my, my closer's position. So a um, little, little knock to the ego, a little your pride gets knocked down. Especially as he was close to uncharted territory 600 saves. I wanted to reach another um, round number and uh, selfishly had to go about getting my stuff on track to be able to make something like that happen. But uh, in doing so, it gave me the opportunity to kind of show uh, my teammates that might have been young, that might be in different stages in their career, that um, now is an opportunity if I'm going to talk the talk, it's time to walk the walk. When faced with adversity, you don't run for the hills. Allowing himself to embrace history. Swing a bouncer, shortstop, council, troubles, nine, 600 for Trevor Hoffman, there it is. As it turned out, we only got one more after that, and uh, uh, it's kind of all she wrote. So after 2010, did you want to play again? Did you think that you could? I had expectations of what I expected out of my performance, and if it wasn't going to be to the level that we'd all come accustomed to or what I expected, then it, it was time to walk away from the game. The summer ceremony with teammates, video tributes and gifts is a highlight of a lifetime where he pays tribute to his foundation, starting with his wife, Tracy. 18 years she plugged away at this game with me and it was her love of family and faith that kept us together 
and kept us going strong on the right path. I told him beforehand, I said, I know where I stand with you. You don't have to tell me anything. And then when he started talking, I thought, okay, hold it together, you know. But it was very flattering. I mean, when he calls you your foundation, and, and he hit it perfectly when he said about, you know, my faith and, and he, he, the things that are important to me. You gave me three wonderful children, three wonderful boys, Brody, Quinn, and Wyatt. What have you learned most from your dad? Think of others instead of yourself. You know, if somebody's just not doing great, it's not their day, you, you just have to go the extra mile to cheer them up. He's a professional He's parent. He's a loving dad. Mm -hmm. Trevor will add his awards and acknowledgments, including a jersey signed by all his Brewers teammates, to his collection at the Hoffman home we first saw in 2005. There's been some significant pieces and pieces that kind of paint the picture over, over time. Over time, it's a neat story. Beating the odds from the beginning. At six weeks old, Trevor William Hoffman had a defective kidney removed. Small for his age and always the underdog, he strived to be like his two older brothers. Greg, who'd become a high school coach and teacher, and Glenn, a major league infielder and coach. The luckiest kid around to have two big brothers paving the way. Trevor values his parents' influence. His late father, Ed, a Marine, became a singer and married his mother, Mickey, a British ballerina. They raised their three boys in Anaheim. Ed, a postal worker, sang the national anthem at Little League and Angels games. And the things that we stand for come from the things that they taught us. And it gives me great pleasure, Mom, to say I love you and I thank you for the things that you taught us. He would be proud. He'd look, look at him in the eye <clears throat> and say, job well done. You watch a little skinny guy grow into a big, strong man that people admire. And to be honest with you, I'm prouder of him as a person than I ever could be as a ball player. The Reds drafted him out of the University of Arizona as a shortstop. When he couldn't hit with a wood bat, he became a pitcher. Picked up by Florida, he's part of a controversial trade to San Diego, with a prediction then by right fielder Tony Gwynn. We didn't just trade Gary Sheffield to get you and not think that you're going to be the closer. Got him with a changeup. You can't believe the variety of pitches that Trevor Hoffman has come up with. But I don't think any of us had any idea that Trevor was going to turn out to be the kind of closer that he became. Trevor has been collecting a ball from every game he's saved, including his final milestones. Trace let me have this little area <laughs> in the area. big hallway. And go, and, the go and relive hallway. your glory days, Trev. <laughs> you know, have me back in here and I'll have Channel 4 Padres going and all the one-on-ones up on the TV there one day. And I'll just be back here just <laughs> pretending I'm still playing. Two days after the tribute, he soaks in the sun, reflecting on the experience. It exceeded my wildest of dreams. When I look up there and I see that number, I want you guys to remember that that guy cared about being a teammate and that he understood that to achieve true success, there's no shortcuts. Thank you. Then a surreal moment, newly discovered footage of his late father singing opening day 1981, when his brother Glenn made his major league debut. Oh, say can you see by the hunter Eli. Always wanted everyone to, to kind of hear my dad sing and uh, uh, to be able to sit back and be proud of what he was about and all the accolades that he had gotten in his life to, to be put on that stage without us but know that he was there with us was, was special and he nailed it. He always did nail it, but he, he nailed it for, uh, for everyone that was in attendance. It really felt like he was there. It really did. It really did. And I think uh, uh, all of us on stage were touched by that. That our flag was still there. A magical moment on a remarkable journey. Stars
Since retiring, Trevor Hoffman has put on a uniform either at spring training. Did you feel like grabbing a ball? Nope. And nope. nope. Really? No. Very similar to when I made the transition from infielder to pitcher. The writing was on the wall. I'd, I'd maxed out what I could do. Or moving around the minor leagues, working with pitchers. It's not easy to coach. It's not easy to be honest, directly honest with them, because it does no good to sugarcoat things. Um, but in, in, at the end of the day, I, I think guys appreciated the honesty of, you know what, I, th I think this, these type of things will work. And it's, it's all about getting them to the next level. It's about the player that's playing today. It's about what you can do to help them out. Off the field, he's helped the front office with draft day. Dabbled in broadcasting on Fox Sports San Diego, both as a fill-in commentator and as a guest when he was enshrined in the Padres Hall of Fame. But uh, I also understood when things didn't go real well, the media has a job to do, and the last thing you want to do is make their job more difficult by not being there and being accountable. And I'm proud to be the newest member of the Padres Hall of Fame. Thank you. He's long been honored locally and nationally for his charity and community service efforts. And with a salute to their fathers, former Marines, Trevor and Tracy now support the National Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation, benefiting local students. And they're so happy that they're going to get a chance to go to college. And they're so proud of where they come from that uh, it, it's pretty awesome. Where I went up to Petco yesterday, had a chance to throw to Matt Camp and Quentin and just watch Cots go through some drills with them and uh, kind of try to apply some of those drills to the boys. It worked out pretty good. Yeah, some of the things I've been trying to make a breakthrough for a while, <laughs> going, gosh, the big leaguers are doing it this way. Let's try it, guys. And it worked out pretty good. As structured as he was in his career, he's savoring his schedule's flexibility. Feels good to be home, though, huh? Oh, yeah. Home's, home's where the heart's at, right? Yeah. While his boys grew up in the game, he's missed a lot over the years. Being able to go to their functions now that they're involved in stuff and um, the face-to-face -face contact. When we had the retirement ceremony, Brody was starting high school the next day. And I, and I, I never really looked at it kind of in that particular manner, but it was either going to be a great thing or it was going to be a lot of pressure to walk into a, a high school campus when your face is plastered on the paper of the next day and, and you're on the news you know, reels on, at night before you're going to start high school. And he handled it well. He's grown into a fine young man. Uh, as a senior at Cathedral Catholic, uh, Quinn is a junior at Cathedral, and Wyatt as a sophomore. Um, couldn't be more proud of the people that they are and what they stand for. We still have our uh, parental uh, issues that we always have to go through with kids, but uh, uh, they're growing up to be fine young men. And Tracy has been... Beautiful busy. as ever and a rock, rock of my life, and uh, one that we lean on as a family um, quite heavily with her faith. and. Um, just keeps us, she's the glue that keeps us together. Spending more time at their beach house. There's nothing better than watching the sun go down every night and having a nice meal and calling it a day. So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky, man. I'm, I'm, I'm living a charmed life, trust me. As for his baseball legacy. I, I still pinch myself every time I walk into Petco and look up on the, the batter's eye and, and see 51 uh, you know, alongside of uh, the other greats of the organization. So. You know, it, it, it's hard to put in um, perspective the immortality part of that's going to be up there forever. Will that immortality be cemented on a national level? He becomes eligible for the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot starting in 2016. While somewhat reserved on the topic upon retirement. If the writers feel that that's something that they want to bestow upon me, then, then that would be a great honor. Do you let yourself think about it Absolutely. a little more? My career is over with. There's not anything I can do to change it. I'm not coming back from retirement, and the numbers are what they are. My career has stood for what it stood for, and um, that's when you kind of hand it off to the writers. So um, now that some of my contemporaries are going in, um, Smoltzy and Pedro and Biggio this year are going to be inducted, Maddox, Glavin, Frank the, the year before, um, it's great to see the numbers of guys have gone in. And so you start kind of going, hey, you know, that would be awesome. You know, could, could it happen? Um, I think being in a specialty role is, is not a definitive number or type of career that you can say, put the stamp on it, send them to Cooperstown. Uh, and that's a little bit scary. Only a handful of relief pitchers are enshrined. Could he represent the first of his era? Is having been the all-time saves leader until passed by the Yankees' Mariano Rivera enough? 
How will his limited postseason play and all the others on the ballot factor in? I think those are things I can't concern myself with or control. Then there's the steroid era. The fact that you came through that clean. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but... Clean. <laughs> clean, okay. Um, I think that is something that people will really, they really value and appreciate. But honestly, no one ever is really going to know if everybody's clean. That, and that's kind of the bummer part about that era is that there's always going to be suspicion. There's always going to be a shadow. There's always going to be, uh, well, was it done on the right terms? I probably could have had a louder voice about it not being something we want to do and call out those um, that maybe did, but it's just not what you did. I appreciate the players today that they want a, a clean playing field, and I appreciate the testing and how it's gotten to the point it's gotten to now that it's not um, a wild, wild west out there. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's moving in the right direction. Things, things are definitely better. Why did you choose to play by the rules? I think that's just the way I was raised. Um, not to pound my fist on the, on the table and be higher and mighty. It just, I didn't need it. I was pretty good without it. Um, I wasn't one kidney. I was always kind of concerned about from a health standpoint that way. Um, I enjoyed working out, and I, I, I wanted to look across the field and say, I outworked you, and I got a lot of satisfaction in that. And that was just kind of an edge that I wanted to create rather than a cheating edge. Realistic that it's a rare honor with no guarantees. Joe DiMaggio, three years. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing to have to wait a few years if you got to get into the Hall of Fame. Um, not everybody's a first-time, uh, first-ballot Hall of Famer. While he's too modest to stake a claim, in 2011, Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn and other Padres colleagues offered their take. I'll say it. you the Hall of Fame, without question. Without question. It's just hard to find in sports where, you know, teammates, opponents, fans, media can all, all have this mutual respect for this one player. Trevor did it through his, his, his guile, his understanding, and I think his drive. I might have been here in the 70s, Tony Gwynn in the 80s, but definitely the 90s were dominated by Trevor Hoffman. A lot of things that I learned about how the game works and how you're supposed to conduct yourself as a professional, I learned obviously from my dad, but a lot, a lot from Trevor too, watching how he did his thing too. The thing I'll hang my hat on is that I showed up every day, worked hard, tried to be a good teammate, and while some of the bigger accolades weren't there, it was a pretty consistent career, and if it stacks up, it stacks up. His priorities never wavering. Stay grounded with the, the things that are important in your life, the, the most important things that are going to be there forever, and that's your family and friends and your faith. You know what? You'll be okay. Fans, players, family, friends, the media, we have all witnessed Trevor Hoffman's legacy in the making. No matter what the next accolades may be for number 51, we can all learn from what Trevor's time and actions mean. They are a benchmark for integrity, resilience, and an understanding that to achieve true success, there are no shortcuts. This special presentation of One-on-One -on -one with Jane Mitchell was brought to you in part by Cox Communications and made possible by a generous grant from Becky Morse.